Yeah. Welcome to Toyota Time with Timmy the Toolman and Sean. What we are going to do today is we are going to pull the alternator on my truck right here. We are going to replace the brushes in the alternator as preventative maintenance. I have a longtime mechanic and he was telling me that he's seen a lot of cars and trucks come in at about the 150,000 mile range needing some alternator work. And he says usually the brushes are the culprit. The brushes are wear item on the alternator. And a lot of times you could fix your alternator by just replacing the brushes and not getting a whole new one or a remanufactured one. Since I do a lot of long road trips, instead of waiting for my alternator to have a problem, I'm going to do some preventative maintenance and try to stop any alternator problems from happening. Now, there's other ways an alternator could obviously fail, but the brushes is a common one. So, what are we going to use as references for this job? Well, first of all, we are going to use the factory service manual. It explains in the charging section on page 6 in this 2000 Toyota 4Runner manual that you disconnect the connector from the generator right there. You remove the nut and disconnect the wire from the generator. Adjust the, the lock nut so you can remove the belt. Then you remove the pivot bolt and remove the generator. The one thing it doesn't mention is that I'm going to also disconnect the battery. So I'm going to take the negative cable off the battery just so I don't have any problems with sparking electrical. So I'm going to disconnect the battery first. And this next page just kind of shows you take off this back cover and then you can see the brush holder is right there. The brush holder is this little doodad right here. It's got these two spring spring mounted brushes. So spring mounted. They're both spring mounted. So these ride along a shaft and over time they wear out. Kind of really curious how worn down my brushes are when I pull them out. Looks pretty simple. You just got two screws that hold it in. You remove those screws and that's it and put it back together. There's other things that can fail like the voltage regulator and the diode. This is one of our main references and it gives you the torque specs for the pivot bolt which is 38 foot pounds and the lock nut which is 25 foot pounds. The part number for the brushes is 27370. 75060. So I paid 23 bucks, but the list price is 27. Another reference that I'm going to use is that Toyota4runner.org website, Nissan H. He did a nice write up on how to do this repair. So I'm going to use this as a reference too. And he explains further than just doing the brushes, he talks about the diode and the, and the regular. So this, again, that's the brush kit right there. This is the diode kit. And this is the IC regulator. Those are all things that could potentially fail on a, a alternator, but the brushes being the main culprit. And so he goes through the, the whole deal explaining how to do it. So pretty nice. So I'm going to follow his tutorial and use the factory service manual to do it. First thing we're going to do is I'm going to remove the skid plates. You most likely don't have to remove the skid plates to do this, but it could be a little easier to see what you're doing by doing it. So do whatever works for you. And then we're going to get the alternator up. I'm kind of curious of what my current belt tension is. So the factory service manual states a new belt will be at 160 plus or minus 20 foot pounds. A used belt will be 100 plus or minus 20 foot pounds. They describe a new belt refers to a belt which has been used less than five minutes on a running engine. What I bought for this is kind of like what they show in the picture here, this Burroughs gauge, is um, how accurate it is, I don't know. But I figured it's going to be probably a better test than just checking the deflection by, you know, pushing on the belt. That's what I've used in the past, just kind of a ballpark amount of deflection, usually about like maybe a half an inch of deflection. But you're able to move it that much. Why not get this tool? It's a little pricey. I think it was 100 bucks or a little more. I'll put a link in the description. So I'm going to check what my current belt tension is and see how accurate it is if it's in the right range. What you do with this tool is you, you push all the way into where this, uh, what I don't know what you call this, the little catcher, makes some distance between this part so you can hook the belt 
and then the belt rests on these things and it gives you the tension lined up. You read the tension lined up with this notch on the top right here, right on my thumb. So whatever it reads, that's going to give you a, tell you where you're at. So I'm going to get it on there. I'm going to depress it, hook the belt. And with this tool, you're going to get different readings uh, based off the di the distance between a, the, a couple different pulleys. What you want to do is try to get it as centered as possible. And if I go down right here, it looks like it's only at about 60, a little more. Let me just take a second reading just to make sure. Yep, it looks like it's just a little over 60. You can see that in YouTube land. It's a little bit above 60, and that's too light. It should be at least 80, somewhere around 80 in this white region right here. So uh, when I put it all back together, I'm going to uh, increase the tension a little bit on the belt. So this is how you check the deflection. So how much you can move this up and down. And the way I understand it, about a half inch, you know, maybe to three quarters of deflection is about right. And you could also do the test where you... If you're able to turn the belt all the way around on itself, twist it, that could also be an indicator that it, it's not tight enough. So we're definitely a little bit under tension. I could just kind of feel that, that it's loose. And you might be wondering, why is this a big deal? Well, whatever you're driving with that belt, if it's too loose, it might be slipping on the pulleys and it might not be giving you the right charge. Like for this alternator, if it's slipping a little bit, you might be losing some charging efficiency with the alternator with it not being tight enough. If it's too tight, too tight could be bad also because now you're putting extra strain on the bearings and all these pulleys. So too tight is also not good either. So you want to be right in that sweet spot. It doesn't have to be exactly perfect, but it's got to be somewhere in that range. Okay, first things first, I'm going to disconnect the battery so I'm not having any power running to the truck. I got just a little quarter inch drive ratchet with a 10 millimeter. And I'm just going to loosen this up and pull it off. Tuck that in there. So now I have no power. Now I'll disconnect the power connector to the alternator, which is there. I'm going to disconnect that next. Oh, you know what? I, should cut the, uh, put the I just took this little plastic cover off. You just got to get your fingers underneath there and pry on it. Electrical connection off the alternator. So this is a 10 millimeter nut also, just like the battery terminal. So I'm just going to use this quarter inch ratchet again and loosen it. This just slides off, it looks like. Okay, that's free. There is another little connector right here. So this little plastic tab was into the alternator. I ended up just kind of yanking on and then bent one of these tabs out. It just holds this wire. I was able to finally get it out just by kind of tugging on it a little bit. All right, so now I'm gonna get the here off, unplug that. It might be easier to, to pull out the starter par partially and then tilt it. This connector, in the back, it's pretty hard to get your hand in there to, to squeeze it to pull it out. So my idea now is to just get the belt loose, get the belt off, pull the, the alternator out, and then tilt it to where I can unplug that plug in the back to where I get my hand on it more securely because it's just too hard to get back in there. So that's going to be my technique is I'm going to get the belt off and get the alternator out and then unhook it. First thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to loosen up this pivot bolt, this one right here a little bit. So I have a 14 millimeter half inch drive with the smallest extension and a 14 millimeter. See if I can break this pivot bolt free. There we go. Okay, that's loose. Now I'm going to get a loosening the nut that holds the adjuster in place and then uh, adjust the, the adjuster to take tension off the belt so I can remove it. Next one I'm working on is I'm going to break free the adjusting lock nut that holds the adjuster in place. So, hold on there good enough. Let's see if I get a good, better, better leverage here. Okay, that's loose. Now I have to adjust this adjuster right here, I'm going to be backing it off, so uh, counterclockwise to get that off. I think I might use a gear wrench for that. This nut, the lock nut, was a 12 millimeter. This adjuster is also a 12 millimeter. So I'm just using this ratcheting wrench made by gear wrench. 
and now I'm going to just jack it off and loosen the belt. When I got enough, uh, got it loose enough where I could pull it, pull the belt off the pulley, I'm good. A little bit more. It's almost there. There we go. All right, belt is off. Now we got to take the lock nut off, right here, and then the next thing I do is put the pivot bolt out, and then I can take the alternator out. Things holding in there, so it's definitely got some resistance. I guess you maybe have to wiggle that thing out. This thing appears to be kind of wedged in this bracket, so I'm just going to use this little, little pry bar and see if I can break it free. Got a little bit of movement. There we go. Little extra force. There we go. I can get at this connection. And now I got it out, I got the connector off, and the alternator's out. You can see this is the, this is an original, it's a Toyota Denso alternator, made in Japan. I like it. Bearing feels pretty smooth to me. I don't feel any movement. It's a good sign. Okay, let's work on taking this back plate off. It looks like they're pretty small. I'm going to use my quarter inch drive again. What size is that? The 8 millimeter. So, I'm going to break these free. I don't know if the cover is going to slide off without that loosened. And then there's a little, this tab here. So this looks like it's also 8 millimeter. Take this one off. Yeah, it would have prevented it from coming off. So we got to make sure that that... Now will this slide off? I think I have to take this off. That's a 10. Little tabbage. There we go. Just spinning it around. Working it off, working the cover off. Yeah, I think it was hanging it up. This, 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 uh, see, it couldn't get past there. That's why. So, you should take this, this part off. Now, the cover's off. These are the brushes. So, we were wondering if this little plastic doodad was part of it. And it is. This looks like just a couple small Phillips screws. This thing will slide right off. Nope. I'm going to strip, end up stripping it. Okay. Let's see here. There we go. Just try not to strip these little screws. There's one loose. Okay. Two. Let's slide this thing off. Okay. Now, check out this comparison. So, okay, that's still sprung right there. Look how much it's worn down. So, that's right up against the springs, you see. Right against the springs. And we'll measure this. Just compare it side by side. Look how much that's worn down. That's a good maybe three or four millimeters shorter than the new ones. So after time, if they wear down too far, you're not going to get a good connection and your alternator is not going to work properly. It's going to charge subpar or not charge at all. You can see down there, 
there's a bunch of brush material but I got some compressed air I could just blow it out with some compressed air so with my measuring tool uh, I think the best way is to use this side so I got it to where it's just resting up against the brush not pushing the spring in and the other sides resting against the plastic and so that's 13.76 uh, millimeters kinda hard to do but maybe closer to 13.3 millimeters because I think I was pushing on the spring a little bit let's see what the new one is at now nine millimeters so I was right it was about a four millimeter difference of wear definitely a good choice to replace these that's the IC regulator this is the diode kit going back to my alternator regulator diode kit there was a bunch of like old brush material down there so I just took my air compressor and I just blew it out a little bit to, to clean it out now I'm gonna get the new brushes in so remember this little uh, plastic tab was facing up and you could see that these also have a different level this left side tab is higher than the right side and when you look at the alternator itself it kind of makes it self-explanatory because this connection sits higher than this connection so what I'm going to do is depress these with a screwdriver slide it in there no so Sean was finally able to get it he pushed the screwdriver against it and buried them down into their little hole there and then slid it on while he was doing that I was thinking this little pick tool you gotta get something thin in there to where you can get that bottom brush from hanging up so now we're gonna get the screws back in now we just gotta get the cover back on and uh, the other piece back on and we're good to go So just put everything back on like you take took it off. Before I cinch these down, I'm gonna get this connector back in. And you see it's it's got a shape to it, flat and rounded, so you can't really put it in backwards. So just put the nut back on that holds it. Okay, I'm going to tighten these first. I'm just going to cinch them down a little bit each at a time. Okay, that's cinching up. That's cinching up. If you're wondering about a torque spec, I don't even think it said a torque spec for this. It's don't use a lot of force. Small fastener, a little bit of force. Big fastener, more force, you know. You just got to adjust how much you tighten it. So just the fact that I'm using this little quarter inch ratchet is not going to let me get a lot of leverage on these nuts unless I'm the Incredible Hulk, you know. It's just a cover. So anyways, now I'm going to tighten this thing back on. Okay, nuts tight. So this thing is ready to go back in. This thing is going to fight me getting back into that bracket where this slides in right here, but that's probably going to be the hardest part, I'm, I'm guessing. So I'm going to get the alternator down in there first, maybe resting right there on that adjustment bracket. It's resting on that bracket, and then I'm just going to plug this one in. Was it in there? God damn it. There, I felt it click. And it's in there securely. Now... I'm going to try to work this thing into the bracket. Huh. Like I thought it was going to be a bitch. I'm going to see if I can, something I can pry up against to work that thing in place. Well, it's going in there. I'm just working it back and forth. I'm, I'm working it back and forth and pushing with my thumb. Well, that's got to be pretty close. Not there though. One thing to say about getting this alternator back in to where you can get this pivot bolt lined up like we finally did is a pain in the ass. There's no other way to say it. Pain in the ass. So. 
he came up with getting this long breaker bar as low as possible on here and I tapped on it with my plastic mallet and was able to tap it in place. The final adjustment is how we did it. This is a pretty invaluable tool. It's a little telescoping mirror with a light. You can't really get your eye in there to see where you need to adjust it to line up the alternator with this bracket. So I used the mirror to kind of see where, where I needed to adjust it to get it to line up because it's got to almost be perfect to get that bolt in. So then I would take a look and then move it a little bit with my hands or with a pry bar. Finally got the damn thing lined up. So with this job, I think this is going to be the hardest part for any of you doing this repair is getting this pivot bolt lined back up. But we finally got it. Thank God. Now I'm just going to get the belt back in place. So you just, you know, push it as far as it'll go. Basically it bottoms out on the, on the dipstick. And then now we're going to get the adjuster back in place and tighten it down. So we're getting this adjuster back in. So it slides in here. Sort of. Get in there. Then it's down. There we go. Okay. I'm just going to turn this with my hand a little bit. We definitely loosen it more than it had to be. Okay. I'm getting the adjustment nut back on. And not tight, just kind of finger tight. Now I'm going to tighten the adjuster, which is here, until I get the right tension for the belt. Now I'm underneath the truck while Sean filming from up above. You might find it's going to be easier for you for doing it up above. But we're just doing this. It makes it easier for in different places to film. I'm feeling some tension there now. Let's see where we're at. That's pretty close. I'm going to give it a couple more turns and then check it with my tension gauge. So it's currently showing about 65. So I want to bring it up to about 80. So I'm going to tighten this thing a little more. I've now got it to right about 80, which according to the OTC tool, it's right up kind of in the middle of uh, the good range before mine was closer to 60. So I've increased my belt tension by about 20 pounds. The next thing I'm doing is I'm torquing this lock nut for the alternator adjuster to 25 foot pounds. Okay, that's at 25 foot pounds. Okay, the last thing we're going to tighten is the pivot bolt. And the pivot bolt is 38 foot pounds. And that's it, 38 foot pounds. So we got to get the electrical connection back on as the last step. So remember, you got this little plastic tab. Push it into the hole that it was before, then slide this connector over, and then grab the nut. But that was a 10 millimeter. No torque spec for this, just cinch it up snug. And that's snug. And we got to put our plastic protector back on. So this just should snap right in place over the top, like so. And that's it. We'll reconnect now our negative battery terminal. Ten millimeter again. And that's secure. Is we're gonna start it and uh, using my uh, multimeter. I'm going to see what uh, kind of charging I'm getting. So I got this uh, digital multimeter. I've got it set to the 20 volt mark. You basically put the setting to uh, that's close to the, the value you want. So since I know the battery and the uh, alternator are not going to be showing a value any much higher than 14 volts or somewhere around there, I put it on 20. 200, I wouldn't get as accurate of a measurement from the tool. So let's just see what my battery's doing right now. So I just put one probe on the, it doesn't matter which one, put it on the other one. And right now it's showing that my battery is at about 12.8 volts, which is good. Now I'll start the engine, we'll hook it up and we'll see what the charging system is doing. 
Okay, starting it. You clear? Okay, engine is running. Let's see what the charging system's doing. So it's right now charging at 14.3 volts. So that's good. So yeah, we're charging, charging about 14.3 volts. So that's good. It was a little bit of a struggle, especially getting that alternator back into that bracket. But luckily I had Sean around. He figured out a good way to tap that thing in place and get it close. And then I used that little handy telescoping mirror with the light to kind of be able to look into the hole to see how well it was lining up and to figure out how to adjust it enough to where I can get the bolt. You definitely don't want to get the bolt in there and then start pounding on that bolt. You're going to mess up your threads. That's not the smart way to go. You know, take the extra time to just shimmy that thing whatever way you can. If you're struggling, I suggest highly you can get those little mirrors that like at uh, Sears or maybe even other auto parts stores will sell those things. Real handy. So, I hope you learned something today. This is definitely a worthwhile thing to do as preventative maintenance. Rather than waiting for you to get on a trip, maybe 500 miles away from your home and now you've got a charging issue and you got to take it to a shop and maybe you don't have the right tools or whatever. Now you're paying some jamoke and BFE to fix your truck for you when you could have prevented this problem. So brushes wear out like we just showed you in this video. Do yourself a favor. If you're approaching 150,000 miles or if you even have more and you don't really know the history of your alternator, Pull the alternator out, do what we did, replace the brushes, give your alternator some more life. So thanks for watching. I'm Timmy the Toolman. That is Sean, and we are out. Thanks for watching. One thing that I didn't cover before that I'm going to cover now is that this shows measuring the brushes, telling you what the standard exposed length, which is 9.5, which is pretty much what my new ones are at because measuring what's left of the old ones it's about five to five and a half millimeters left and i remember earlier in the video we showed that there was a difference of around four millimeters from the new to the old it says the normal standard exposed length is nine and a half to eleven and a half so mine's near nine and a half the brand new ones they say the minimum exposed length is 1.5 millimeters coming out to measuring this it's about five on one end a little over five and then the other brush on the opposite side was about five and a half so they're actually wore a little unevenly but pretty close so apparently i had about three and a half millimeters left before i would have mandatorily had to replace it but i'm glad that i did catch it early how many more miles or how many more hours of operation the engine would have lasted with the three and a half millimeters? No clue. Anyways, uh, it's not that hard of repair. Getting the alternator back into the bracket was kind of a fight, but we finally got it. But the actual replacing of the brushes was pretty darn easy, you know, pretty simple. I highly recommend doing this on your truck if you have, you know, 150,000 miles or more. Go ahead and replace the brushes so you know when you get on a road trip. If, at the very least, you know your alternator is not going to fail because of uh, worn brushes. Good preventative maintenance, in my opinion. If you want to just wait till you have an alternator failure, well, then go right ahead. Anyways, blah, blah, blah.